All right, 4.3, congruent triangles. Uh, objective, students will be able to name and label corresponding parts of congruent triangles. So, triangles that are the same size and shape are congruent. Or you could use the congruent symbol, which I like to do. This means that all of their corresponding parts, so the parts that correspond to each other, we'll talk about what that means. Are congruent. Okay. So corresponding, we'll look down here, just cheat down here a little bit. You can see that A and D are kind of in the same place of the triangle. In fact, they're in the exact same place of the triangle. So those parts would be corresponding. That's what we mean by corresponding. All right. And then we have this saying that we're going to talk about a little bit, and it's CPCTC. And let me tell you what CPCTC, CPCTC stands for. It stands for Corresponding Parts of Congruent triangles are congruent. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay, so if we have two triangles that are congruent, that means all of their corresponding parts are congruent. So that means if these two triangles are congruent, A and D, angle A and D are congruent, and angle B and E are congruent, angle C and F, Segment DF, segment AC, segment AB, segment DE, segment BC, segment EF. These are all congruent with each other. So, we could list all of those here. So, I want you guys to go ahead and try that with me. Um, you should be able to kind of figure it out. But, let's just look at the picture. Angle A is congruent with, like I said before, angle D. B is congruent with angle E. C is congruent with angle F. AB, segment AB is congruent with DE, BC is congruent with EF, and CA is congruent with uh, FD. There we go. So now let's do this as an actual problem. Um, it gives us a bunch of information here. And if I says find the measurements of C as well as the sides of uh, angles, angles, sides and angles of triangle DEF. But we start off saying that these two triangles are congruent. And something else to note is the order matters here. Since it says ABC and DEF, that means that A corresponds to D, B corresponds to E, and C corresponds to F. So right away we know a bunch of things. Like I know that angle D is the same thing as angle A, so I already know that angle D is 51, and I know that angle E is 110. And if I wanted to find angle C, I could plug this stuff in, so I could say, hey, this is 51, this is, this is 110, so if I wanted to find C, I know that they should all add up to 180, so I could just say, hey, X plus 51 plus 110 equals 180, so I'm going to do that off on the side here. X plus 51 plus 110 equals 180. 51 plus 110 is 161. And subtract 161 from both sides. I get X equals 19. That means, hey, C is 19. So I'm going to go back over here. Okay, if angle C is 19, that means that, well, C corresponds with F. F is 19 as well. And as for the segments, I'm just going to match those up. So I have AB. AB is the first two letters. DE is the next two letters. DE. So DE is the same thing as AB. DE is 12. All right, BC is the last two letters. And it lands, lines up with EF. So EF is 23. And AC is the first and the last. So DF is the first and the last. So DF is 24. And there, I have found all the parts on both triangles. And um, that's all there is to it. And if you were to kind of 
fill in all this information. Um, let's see, DE is 12, and up here we have AB is 12, and we have that angle A is 51, and angle D is 51, angle E is 110, this is 19, EF is 23, and this is 24, and over here BC is 23, and AC is 24. You would see that it, it all lines up, right? So the shorter side goes to the shorter side, so everything matches. That's the beautiful thing about the way we name it. It just works out really nicely. So, since that is the case, I want you guys to try and do this next one. And if you need to erase all of this and, uh, and use the picture, that's fine. But you really don't need the picture because we are going to start off with this same statement that ABC is congruent to DEF. And we're just going to change the values around. And you should be able to come up with all the information you need. You should be able to still find all the angles and all the sides just based on how they correspond in this statement. So um, I'll say go ahead and pause the video. I'll put the answers up for that in just a second. Okay. Now you should have done some uh, simple algebra to find out angle C and therefore angle F and then just lined up the information with the other pieces. And hopefully that's what you got. I got angle D is 49, angle E is 111, DE is 10, EF is 26, 26 and DF is 30. Okay. Just a little review of some properties here. We um, Some of these properties, reflexive, symmetric, and transitive properties that we learned back about congruence, they apply to triangles as well. So if I was to talk about the reflexive property, and I would say, hey, JKL is congruent to, we would say by reflexive property, it's just triangle JKL. And if I was to do symmetric property, it means I could spin it around. I could say JKL is congruent to PQR, then PQR is congruent to JKL. And if I was to do the transitive property, JKL is congruent to PQR, PQR is congruent to XYZ. Therefore, JKL can skip the middleman and be congruent to triangle XYZ. So just a reminder of those properties, they still apply. And congruency does not change if you rotate, turn, or slide two triangles. So if you can look here, here it looks like this triangle was rotated to kind of get to this triangle down here. And they're still congruent. Uh, we could flip them, we could turn them, we can rotate them, we can do all kinds of things to them, and they will still be congruent. Okay, well, let's go to the next page. Okay, the vertices of the triangle CDE are C, negative 5, 7, D, 8, 6, negative 8, 6, E, negative 3, 3, and then the vertices of C prime, D prime, and E prime are C prime 5, 7, D prime 8, 6, and E prime 3, 3. We're going to graph each triangle and then verify that triangle CDE is congruent to C prime, D prime, E prime. And we're going to use the distance formula. Now, what I want us to do on this is uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to ask you guys to plot these points. Plot all these points on your graph. And I am going to do it as well, but I'm going to pause the video. So you, you may want to pause it and, and I'm going to pause my recording so that I can put all the points up there. All right. Uh, so go ahead and pause the video and place those points. Okay, so I plotted all the points and I uh, graphed them, connected and made the little triangle. So I have triangle CDE and I have triangle C prime, D prime, E prime. That's what that little dash mark means right there is, is uh, it's just prime. Okay, it means basically that something happened to our original triangle and now it's here. And we could kind of see that it looks like it kind of got like flipped across the y-axis. And we're going to verify that this, these two triangles are actually congruent. We're going to use a distance formula. But remember I said that we can, um, we can verify it just by, or we can use a, a little shortcut instead of distance formula. So let's zoom in to this first triangle. And I'm going to use a different color. Let's go with purple. And I said for each side, we can, uh, instead of using actual distance formula to find this distance, we can count the boxes. We can kind of box it off and then just count. Well, this is a 1 by a 3. Okay. And we could box this one off. And when I box this one off, I get a 2 by a 4. And we could box this one off. And I get a 3 by 5. Okay, so... That means, mathematically, that means that DC is the square root of my two boxes that I created, 1 squared plus 3 squared. 
um, and that means that if I was to simplify that, 1 squared is 1, 3 squared is 9, so I'd just say square root 10. Okay. And then I could go to CE. Well, CE is the square root of 2 and 4, so I'd say 2 squared plus 4 squared. Well, 2 squared is 4, 4 squared is 16, so 4 plus 16 is 20. And the last one, DE, I would say square root, 3 squared plus 5 squared. 3 squared is 9, 5 squared is 25, so 9 plus 25 is 34, so I'm going to say DE equals square root 34. All right, this is important. I'm going to just kind of box all these numbers that I got, because now what I want to do is I want to see if I get the same numbers for the other triangle. Let's use a different color. Um, I'll use uh, orange. I don't think I've used orange before. Okay. So, same thing. Let's check and see. A box CD off. Sure enough, 3 and a 1. Box this guy off. Sure enough, 2 and 4. And box this guy off. 3 and 5. Looks like I'm going to get the same information. Um, so, I'm going to come over here. And write, hey, D prime, C prime is the square root of, I'll zoom in just a tad, I got, looks like I got a 3 and a 1 again, so I'm going to say 3 squared and 1 squared, which 9, which is 9 plus 1, so that's just 10. And the next one I'm going to do is CE, so C prime, E prime. It's the square root of the two numbers I got there was 2 squared plus 4 squared. So C prime, E prime equals the square root of 4 plus 16, which is 20. And let's do D prime, E prime. And the numbers I got there was 3 and 5, so 3 squared plus 5 squared. And I get square root of 9 plus 25, which is 34. Okay, well, they all are the same. Therefore, three sides of the triangle are the same. Therefore, these triangles are congruent. We verified it. So, um, if they were asking us to explain our answer, we could say uh, the two triangles are congruent because all of their sides have the exact same distance. There we go. And for your summary, I want you to just kind of write out again what CPCTC stands for and describe when you would use it. And um, I'll kind of give you a hint about when you're going to use it. You're using it to show that all the parts of triangles are congruent. Okay, that's the main thing that you want to know. You use it to show that all the parts of triangles are congruent.